during the week you rarely get more than 30 people because over that you need an officer and that can be anything from half an hour to an hour and a half um, if it's an hour and a half you have a very wide scope not only to give a message but to have a, a time of prayer for them to have a little Bible study have a question time and I think every would-be pastor who's leaving theological college or Bible college should go and run a few question times <laughs> in prison believe me it it really brings it down to home it's alright to say I've read Martin Lloyd-Jones you've got to speak to Fred Bloggs on, yeah, on ground yeah, level yeah. and I can tell you that many of those prisons are just as bright as people in our universities they haven't had the education but they are as bright some of them have but they're as bright intellectually so mm -hmm. so we go in to do that in addition to that we've teamed up with Christianity Explored I'm glad to say at their request and we have a super partnership with Christianity Explored which I think is the best evangelistic Christian program yes. and I do take part in other ones as well mm -hmm. I speak at an alpha program right. uh, in a couple of places uh, using my own notes I don't like using other people's notes um, but uh, Christianity Explored is brilliant and we we do that at an increasingly number of uh, prisons now and then we have some of our courses of our own which one of our regional directors David Fortune has produced and we we do those as well and our prison ministry associates some of them like Andy McIntosh the professor who speaks much about creation he's got his own he's taken that into Leeds prison um, and we we do that as well we then do one-on-one -on -one visitation uh, for me it's easy because I am officially a, a, an itinerant pastor with Fellowship of Independent Evangelical Churches uh, with whom I again I have close links and a great affection for them they, uh, they I go on a pastoral visit through the chaplaincy so the chaplaincy very kindly let me go to the chapel ply myself and whichever inmate I'm saying with coffee and uh, keep an eye on us they have to do that of yes. course whilst we're speaking for an hour or two and then there is a whole, I've got lever arch files full of letters that prisoners send because uh, we use booklets a lot. Can, may I just please show do. them? Yes, the, please do. There's yes. five of them Hold actually. Hold them up so people can they, see them. Well, the, the first one we did was this, how can God accept me? That is a, um, that is a, all of these are photographic guides to the gospel. Day one publications do them by the way. And, May I say, if anybody wants to get hold of any of these, if they email, may email mm -hmm. me the address you'll give them, I'll make sure that they get the details and they know how many they want to mm -hmm. buy or what have you. Uh, let, let me just say, if you miss the details, the, the email address has been up, but if you miss the details or you're watching the repeat and haven't got it, also if you phone the Revelation office, um, all the details of, of the website and the email address that you can get hold of Gerard will be there so even if it's later on you know you're watching a repeat don't think hey I can't get it get onto the office they will have the details for you and any of these publications that we talk about you can uh, find more details uh, of them and indeed the work in general that we're talking about here of prison work you can also get into touch that way as well thanks mm. well that well that's the first how can God accept me uh, the second one is how can I become a real Christian again um, photographs in it and um, the, the gospel presented the third normal one as it were is brand new off the press how can I find God today the quote or two there uh, from our friend Professor Dawkins as well which you might like to ask me about later I've got an interesting picture of him as yeah. well which uh, <laughs> there you are uh, you know there probably isn't a God I notice there aren't many people on his bus I think there are far less people on his bus than he thinks, actually. Well, mind uh, you, even the atheists aren't sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, John Blanchard's book, book Does God Believe, Believe in Atheists, atheists. is brilliant. Yeah, that's uh, right. which Professor Dawkins had read that. Um, and here's, here's a new one that, um, that people have often asked about. How can God allow suffering? That's an apologetic type book, but it brings the gospel in. And then one which is very personal. As I say, I have a form of blood cancer myself, and so... Um, I felt that it was, I was reasonably qualified to, to, do, to write this one. How can I face terminal illness with peace? Mm. And there's some wonderful stories of people who mm. have done that mm. or who are doing it. Well, we, we, met, we usually, it, usually it's one of these first three, unless I'm doing a specific subject yes. on one of these yeah. in prisons. And nearly every prisoner we, we speak to goes to the cell with one, two or three of these to read. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that too and that means a whole load of letters come back 
Mm. And uh, I met people in prison who say they've been converted through those. Uh, I, I can't go further than that because no. I haven't seen them since. Uh, well, some I have. Yes. Um, so we do that in prison, mm. and also they, uh, we, we produce uh, CDs. Um, my friend John Hawley, who is also full-time with Open Air Mission, and he's one of our prison mm. ministry associates, um, he, he did one on John's Gospel that Open Air Mission very kindly let us uh, put, uh, put, put in the daylight colours, and we've given thousands of those away, mm. which mm. is John's Gospel, very well read, and very clearly explained by mm. John. And we're halfway through doing another one on Mark's Gospel, which Philippa and I are really doing, and that's going to be a four CD set. It's an exposition evangelistically of the whole of Mark's Gospel, and hopefully there'll be a, well, there is a, a manuscript. I hope that will be a published book mm. when, uh, when some kind publisher <laughs> <laughs> wants it, you know. So, so we give those away as well. We get a lot of letters in from those as well. So that's what we do. Mm. Now you ask what happens when you see overcrowding, well, you know, we're not on the administrative side and um, you, one thing you can't do is blame the prisons for the overcrowding. Right, I think, again, there are bad hapenies in anywhere and there are some prison officers who are not as good as others, but as a whole we are greatly impressed by the concern and the professionalism with which a lot of the prison officers, most of them, operate. And that you know they're not the most popular people in the prison doing sure. the job they are, but some of them do it in the best way they possibly can. Mm. And uh, so uh, it's not their fault um, that there's overcrowding. I think I blame the government, but then everybody does. But there are no <laughs> votes in prisons. Right. That's the trouble. So it doesn't uh, they sense, they don't. Yes. And, oh, they'll give lip service to it, but I don't yes. really think when the cabinet meets, it's very concerned compassionately for prisoners. Now I know they've got victims. And I'm very much aware of that. And when I preach the gospel, be it to uh, 150 or be it to 30, I make it quite clear that our sin has not only offended God and that we're guilty because of that and deserve his punishment in hell that Christ bore on that cross for those who trust him, but we've also hurt others. And when you look at, um, when you look, say, at uh, 120 people in a London prison, you think, how many thousands of victims <coughs> immediate and by association wives children parents uh, how many victims are there of that mm. and I, I point out to people look I love you because I'm here for the gospel I want you to come to know Christ but you have to admit that mm. you have to come to God and say I have offended you by thought word and deed I have broken those Ten Commandments which are still relevant and applicable today and I have hurt other people and Jesus said those commandments, the Ten Commandments, are summarizing two, didn't he, mm. uh, Doug? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, the upward one. Love your neighbor as yourself, the horizontal one. And we've broken that. Right. And in, in one sense, I guess, that in the end, you, you can't question the response. Uh, in other words, it would be easy to say, oh, you know, three million prisoners in, you know, invited the Lord into that. Well... It, that may or may not be the case, but what you're doing, of course, is giving each one the opportunity. God knows if they respond yes. rightly in the, or whether they just come because they want to get out of prison, for, out, of the, out of the cell for a while. But God knows that, doesn't yes, he? Yes, exactly. And we, I guess, well, let me ask you a question. Should we be enthusiastic and the same for each one? whatever their reasoning is behind it, and we should give the same to those, even if it's apparent they don't want to know, but yeah. we're going to give it to them. Could, could I give another plug? You yes, told me you I can. could early on. Yes. Um, there's a book I've just written called Beyond Bars, again available from day one, and anyone who wants it, we can sort it out. There may be a special offer available, but I'm not allowed to go into details. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, there's a Beyond Bars on that. And by the way, free as well there is this uh, daylight publication called uh, key prison issues which mm -hmm. will tell you all about the work of daylight christian prison trust uh, that's available for anyone who wants right. to email or ask for it but this actually deals with that very question um that you've just raised um and i have to i've said in the foreword of this book i have not seen many converts i have seen some i have seen people who say they're saved um, and I get letters from people who say 